fashion actually is the language. It's a language without words. It's a language of emotions, of creativity. That's what I love about it. And it also reacts very fast to what is happening in the world. Though now I think it's like only fashion that is connected to technology. My name is Darya Shapovalova and I am one of the co-founders of DressX. If uh, the notion uh, was physical fashion, it's when we start from the garment. Uh, the notion in digital fashion, we start with tech, we start from technology. Technology is everything here. I remember a fashion industry without any social media. And now digital fashion that is like interwinning with social media. Fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world, just because like the clothing production uh, involves so many people and so many resources. But we're not talking only about high fashion, right? It's apparel business. It's like huge amount of clothes that are being produced and the amount of clothes that uh, cost like less than, uh, let's say five, seven dollars where the most harm is happening. Lots of people started to buy clothes just for the content creation. And it, uh, there is a famous research by Barclays Bank that says that in the UK, like 9% of customers who are shopping with credit cards, they actually return the clothes back just because they bought them for the content creation. That's where like social media, I think, started to trigger consumerism even more because that's kind of the new type of how so many clothes should not be produced and just exist for one wear of the clothing on social media. We completely want to eliminate the physical aspect of all of that and we started to brainstorm. So what we can do if we completely eliminate the physical part and it was like, of course, it's the clothes for the content, for the videos and for the photos. And at the same time, the pandemic hit when we understood that the retail will never be the same again. When the production of digital item is happening, it's 97% less emissions of CO2 than the physical item is being produced. So basically in terms of sustainability, where digital fashion can really help is that if you need an item just for like a fashion story or for wearing it once on social media, you can buy digitally. We just need to provide a different solution where there is a choice. DressX is the first and the biggest multi-brand retailer of digital-only clothes. We started with like five designers, now we have over 80. It was like 35 items, now it's 1,400 items at DressX. My co-founder is Natalia Modenova. It's the person with whom I worked at many of my projects in the past. And the third member of the founding team is Julie Krasnyanko. And uh, she used to be in technology for 15 years. So me and Natalia, we have fashion background and Julie, she has a tech background. So it's a kind of great, different combination. So at DressX, the production uh, is structured on a different level. So first of all, uh, in-house, we are producing digital garments and it's all done in various programs like Cloth 3D, a marvelous designer. And it takes around two to four days to create uh, one item. The designers submit their files and we start the digital dressing, we test the files, how they work on different images, how they don't. We're at the moment of time when sometimes it's not possible that uh, you understand that it's a digital item if a person didn't mention that. Any item can be, in the end, fit on any body type. I see the world where digital clothes are worn and reworn and traded and worn by someone else. It's all about how we can replicate the experience of physical clothes and digital. And we never thought that we will, we will be buying someone's clothes from a wardrobe. I am absolutely confident that in three to five years, every fashion brand, every fashion designer will have this revenue stream from digital fashion. So math is extremely important in how the digital garment fits in the final image and uh, it's also super important for the machine learning. Without technology and software engineers and machine learning engineers, digital fashion would never exist. Digital fashion provides so many opportunities to the designers because it's just an opportunity to create something that doesn't have gravity or the textures that would never exist in real life. Those artists who are very good in science, let's say, and who love physics or who know a lot about space, for example, they can create uh, garments that would never exist in reality and that can kind of uh, break the rules of existence. 
my projection is that from three to five years from now, every person who likes, loves fashion and buys it on a regular basis will also have uh, his or her digital wardrobe. It will only continue to grow faster, but there are so many significant things that can be done in the world because of the uh, tech and uh, because of all this new knowledge that we receive in the schools. In Ukraine, it's only now that we have an opportunity to choose the curriculum. When I was learning, it was all about the program that I was ought to do, so I did not have that much choice. I couldn't select the certain curriculum. And here it's more about understanding what exactly you want to learn and to spend the time on the disciplines you want to. It's not necessarily the case in Ukraine. When I was studying, I think it's changing right now. We do have STEM education for sure, and especially like science, tech are very important, and, uh, and math, uh, it's like the subject that everyone studies in the school. And yes, STEM education is uh, absolutely important. The story of how we managed to put Ukraine on the world's fashion map. That's the moment of my career where I'm the most proud of. We managed to change something in the entire country, uh, culturally. The Fashion Week that I co-established with some other people and designers, that project quickly became quite an important one for the Ukrainian fashion scene because it completely changed it. I was writing for Style.com, which then became Vogue.com. So I was always a journalist, also like pitching the stories about Eastern European fashion to different magazines. And um, also started a fashion website, and it was the first independent fashion media in Ukraine. I was also in a wholesale business, representing designers to the biggest stores worldwide. I realized that like everyone is asking me for the suggestion of how they should develop their business, what they should do next. So I opened the school, which was the first private fashion school in Ukraine, in Kiev. When I started Kiev Fashion Institute, it was because I realized that there are not so much knowledge that people can receive professional knowledge about fashion in Russian language or in Ukrainian. So basically, we all read lots of books, right? But uh, Theory is great, but when you do something in practice, it can be completely different. I think art is essential for every person, because I believe like the most interesting ideas are born on the intersection of different areas and technologies or like areas of knowledge. So that's why I believe like if someone is studying science, it's important to take at least like one course in art. I believe to go and do what you've learned simultaneously or when you're learning it is super important. So I believe STEAM is a viable curriculum for everyone because actually I think that's the great foundation of whatever you want to do next in life. I think it's really important to, for everyone to understand that the success can come to any person if you really work hard and when you know what you want to achieve. Because for me it's a mission. It's a mission of how I can change the world of fashion and how I can show to everyone that they can go and build their companies if they really want to and if they work hard.